Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Austin Young Chamber's 11th Annual Fave Awards. And yeah, wow, this year's a little different, right? Um, not as many tuxes, but a jacket and sweatpants certainly work. Um, we got people tuning in, I think, from all over Texas and even beyond Texas. Welcome to our 100 plus guests. Um, that I know some people are watching from RVs, backyards, but um, thanks for joining us. This is a really important event to AYC, and I'll mention that in a bit. But welcome again. I'm Kyle Kerrigan. I serve as chair of the Austin Young Chamber Board of Directors. I've been a chamber member for about five years, and in that time, I'm, I, I think I'm really a good example of our mission realized. We strive to empower young professionals to create business, community, and individual success. And I'm really grateful for the career advancements I've made in the last four years. And I'm even more grateful for our, the friendships. But it started because somebody extended a hand towards me and said, hey, come join, join this. And this was, yeah, about five years ago at our foundation's first ever event. Um, but now that I think I've had that, I'm more excited about our vision. And we envision a greater Central Texas that has the most talented, collaborative, community-focused workforce in the country. That's our angle. We are focused on you, the employees, the, the workforce that is driving this community and making a lot of change. So welcome. Thank you. This year, again, has yeah, been different. So um, one of the things that we've changed is our focus. We had big goals at the beginning of the year. Um, I know I did uh, for both our members and, and the organization in general. They've changed. But um, at the same time, there's a lot of people to thank for helping us change because we had to. So we revamped our strategic plan. And those people that were there the whole way this past year are our annual partners. We turned over every rock. We talked to everyone we could because this organization is important to a lot of people. So thank you to those partners that have been with us throughout this tough year. Also, thanks to my fellow board of directors. Um, they're the ones that have helped revamp that strategic plan. They've dealt with a lot of Kerrigan phone calls, questions. Hey, why should we do this? Is this working for us? Is this what our members need? And um, I really appreciate those folks that dove in and were willing to challenge previously held assumptions. Thanks. Uh, we need those open minds. And then I think the other folks that are sometimes our unsung heroes are committee chairs, the, the folks that do a lot of the work that makes this organization tick and run smoothly. Um, and, and behind them are, you know, vice chairs or other committee leadership. And uh, I want to personally thank you all for putting in a lot of effort in the last 10 months or so that seems like two years worth of effort. Right. So um, it's not it's not unrecognized. You know, we I, I certainly recognize you. And then um, why we're all here. Right. Fave. So Fave is uh, in its 11th year. Uh, this is my fifth. Um, and Fave is, in, is pretty significant for a lot of reasons, but it's really our cornerstone of our relationship with the business community. I mentioned we want to see Austin and the greater Central Texas area have the most talented, collaborative, community-focused workforce in the country. And we're doing it in support of those businesses that are our members, that those employees work for and ultimately celebrate and drive community change through. So we appreciate them. Uh, and I think also this year, it's a little different in terms of the rubric we use. Our judges, thanks, I'll get to you, you all in a minute, but um, we really wanted to elevate those companies that said, hey, our customers in this community are really important, our employees, and they're committed to this community, this greater Central Texas region. And so there are three big things that stood out. Those, those that operated with resiliency, adaptability, and innovation. And the other thing about those three characteristics, being resilient, innovative, and adaptive, um, that was our two staff members this past year, Alicia and Mel. Thank you um, for embodying those characteristics too. And um, congrats to all of our finalists. Though, though they're certainly here because we saw those qualities. Our members saw those qualities in them, and um, we want again say we 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 see you, we hear you. Um, 
Now, on to our sponsors that made this event possible. Um, thanks, uh, I, I smile at this one every time, I can't help it, right? Uh, our supporting sponsor, Tito's Handmade Vodka. And then our category sponsors, Ascension Seton. I've met some Ascension, Ascension uh, folks here tonight, as well as Civilitude, Lyft, and University Federal Credit Union. Um, then our gift bag partners, uh, they're definitely the ones helping us out a lot too. HEB, for instance, and all the folks you'll see on the screen in front of you. And then our silent auction con contributors, thank you. Um, if you haven't placed your online bid, please do so. Um, some great things there. You can actually take out your phone, scan the QR code that's on this slide, and take it from there. I'll wait one second to allow that to happen. Now, um, the, the folks that um, I think everybody here has probably met one of you, um, I hope so. They're the folks that I hope you extend a hand to and an applause to. I'll certainly cheers. That's our fave committee headed by Jennifer Woods. Cheers. And then thanks, you, thanks again to our judges and members that helped us elevate those businesses that again exhibited resiliency, adaptability, and innovation. So now without further ado, um, on to our keynote. So a fierce, a, fear, a fierce female and serial entrepreneur, Kathy Terry has been making waves since starting her first business over 20 years ago. She is the co-founder of P. Terry's Burger Stand with her husband, Patrick, and the founder of In Lou, the first social giving app where users can make donations and share a personal message with a friend anytime, anywhere. Please join me in welcoming to the virtual stage, our keynote, Kathy Terry. Hello. Oh my gosh, I'm here. Um, hi, I'm Kathy. I'm so honored to be with you guys tonight, not only as a speaker, but also as a fellow finalist. As Kyle said, Austin Young Chambers is an amazing organization in our community that is connecting and empowering professionals to create business, community, and individual success. So I thought tonight I would talk about one of the businesses I help create, what, why community is so important, and what success means to me. So first, a little backstory. I grew up in West Texas in a working class family. When I was around seven, my dad quit his job as a manager to start his own industrial laundry. So on the weekends, holidays, and the summers, I would help out in the laundry. And then when I was around 10, my parents got divorced. And um, unfortunately, it put my dad in a financial bind. He was still struggling to build his business. There was debt from the broken marriage, and he still had four kids that he had to help support. So he decided the only way he could and get by financially was to actually live in his laundry. So on the weekends I would visit and I would fold shop towels and we would go over his budget. We counted down the months and the days until he could get his own place. I remember um, anytime we wanted to go out to eat, we always had to go to the same restaurant because it was owned by this sweet Chinese family and they would allow my dad to barter for food. Um, once my dad got his own place, um, he would allow other men experiencing homelessness to shower and work in his laundry. So looking back, I realized that my dad's business was not only a source of income, but it was also a lifeline for many. It was um, his identity, his family, his community. And so I bring this up because I think so much of our past influences our future. As you know, my husband Patrick and I built P. Terry's, but the idea for P. Terry's was all Patrick's. I remember when we were dating, he always talked about starting some fast food burger joint. And I thought, well, that's a cute idea, not thinking he'd ever really pursue it. But fast forward a few years, we get married, and I swear not three months into our marriage, he runs off and secures a location. At this point, I'm thinking, well, surely he knows what he's doing. And it wasn't until a few months into the remodel and me asking a lot of questions that I realized his passion project was actually gonna be our passion project. You see my husband, he's the idea guy, the visionary, but operations is just not his thing. So obviously this was going to be a joint venture. But what I didn't know at the time was what we were about to build was going to change my life as well as the lives of so many others. 
to, the truth is we had no idea what we're doing, or at least I didn't, but we did have a vision. We wanted to sell high quality burgers made with fresh ingredients at a reasonable price in a cool space. But I had no idea how to build, run, or manage a restaurant. But obviously that didn't stop us. So in 2005, we opened P. Terry's on a very hot July day with 25 employees. I remember Patrick walking out and pulling the barricade from the drive through and a few minutes later, a car pulled in and I was like, wow, this is really happening. Um, but from that point on, we never looked back. We worked every day from early in the morning to late at night. And it was then we realized that whatever success we were going to have was going to be on the back of those 25 other people showing up to work. So our biggest challenge was creating an environment that allowed everyone to succeed with the skill sets that they had. For the longest time, I thought anyone could be successful if they worked hard and had passion. But over time, I've realized that that is not always true. If you don't have access to certain things, or maybe this, your skin color is not the right color, then sometimes having passion and working hard are still not enough. So at P. Terry's, we tried to even the playing field and give everyone the same level of access. Almost all of our shift leaders, managers, and area directors are promoted from within. A great example of this is Victoria. Her first job with us was cleaning the dining rooms, but with her drive and ambition, she worked her way up through the kitchen and the front of the house, eventually being promoted to shift leader and then manager. Now Victoria is an area director and oversees seven of our locations. And the best part of this is that we have so many Victorias that work in our family. And by giving them access, they are able to create their own path to success. We also realized early on that we were going to have to build a really strong support system for our employees. It happened soon after we opened when Vin called and said, hey, I can't get to work, my car is broken down. Well, we needed him to work and he needed the job. So Patrick told him to hop in the cab and we'd pay for it and we would loan him the money to get his car fixed. You see, so many of our employees are working paycheck to paycheck and any sudden emergency or accident is the difference between having a job and a place to live to losing a job and living on the street. So by realizing that we are all in this together, we tend to make decisions not based on short-term gains, but based on long-term relationships. And by the way, then, whose car we fixed, still works for us today. And that loan was the start of our interest-free loan programs for all of our employees. Some other traditions we started early on were making birthday cakes for each employee on their birthday, and also handing out Christmas bonuses, giving every employee $10 for every month that they work for us. I'm happy to say that I don't have to bake each birthday cake, which is what I did for the first nine years of our business. We now have a full-time employee that bakes each cake and drives a company car to deliver them. We also still pass out Christmas bonuses, um, which is probably one of my favorite days of the year. In fact, last year we handed out over $160,000 in Christmas bonuses to our hourly employees. It was also during our first year of business when we decided we would create a giving back program. I always wanted to give back to the community, but really didn't have the money to make monetary donations. And with P. Terry's, the desire to give back was even greater because our community was so supportive of us. So one night, Patrick and I were eating out at another restaurant. I know every once in a while we eat somewhere besides P. Terry's. And there was a table tent that said that that night they were going to donate a portion of their profits to a local nonprofit. That is when we realized that we could use our business to give back to the community. So we decided we pick one Saturday every quarter and we donate all the profits from that day to a local nonprofit. And I am proud to say that we have done this ever since, giving back over a million dollars to date. Another relationship that was very important to us was with our, our relationship with our vendors. We look at them as our partners. I remember early on when I was doing the books, I would pay our vendors weekly because I wanted them to know that they were a priority to us. And in return, they made us a priority. We have developed very close relationships with so many of our vendors. And in fact, every October, we send a group of employees to Idaho for the potato harvest and to meet the Walker family who supplies us with all of our potatoes. This trip has become an annual tradition and the Walkers have become an extension of the P. Terry family. So over the years, we've received many offers to franchise or buy the business. And you might be surprised to hear that um, 
we almost sold a majority of it a few years ago. Um, after saying no many times, Patrick decided to consider selling. He was tired, which I understood because he had been really carrying the burden of running the business from its inception. I had stepped away from the day-to-day -day part of the business and actually had hired a young man to replace me. So um, after months of the dog and pony show, Patrick decided on a buyer. I was supportive because I could tell things had changed for Patrick. And also this was a huge amount of money, more than I ever thought imaginable. We kidded that we could escape and go buy our own island. We were literally days from signing the contract when I was on a long plane ride and happened to watch the movie, The Intern. Let's just say I got off the plane, I called Patrick and I said, don't sell. This is not what you want your legacy to be. And you know what he said? Thank God. I was having second thoughts, but I wanted to be able to provide security for you and the girls. Well, you can imagine how many people we upset when we walked away from this deal. And we actually had to part ways with the young man who took my place. So at this point, I had to jump back full time into the business. Looking back, I think we got caught up in the growth, the numbers, the money, and really lost sight of what brought us joy. We realized that our intention in creating this business was not to build for an exit, but rather to build for a legacy. Since then, we have continued to grow our P. Terry's family and expand our business. I mean, we know that things will change, but we will always fight for what is right. This is what success looks like me, not living on an island by myself. Obviously, 2020 has been a challenge for many businesses who have been dealing with COVID-19. And in early March, just days before the town shut down, we had no idea where we would land in this pandemic. We actually counted ourselves fortunate when we were considered an essential business. But like many others, we still had to make a lot of adjustments. And it was during this time that one of our main focuses were on our employees. You know, can we keep them safe? How is this going to impact their family, especially with schools closing down? In fact, a few weeks into the shutdown, Patrick and I handed out $50 cash and a $50 HEB card to each of our employees because we wanted them to know that we were grateful for them. I mean, did we change their life? No, but hopefully we made it a little easier for a week or two. So looking back to my dad's days in the laundry business and to our days in the burger business, I realized that we can't always control the cards that we are dealt, but we can decide how we play our hand. And in the end, it's all about the human connections we make along the way. It's about leading with compassion and always doing what is right. And in fact, if it wasn't for our personal connections with our employees, and our concern for their well being, we would not be the company we are today. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be the person I am either. So, thank you very much for allowing me to share just a little of my story. And congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Kathy Terry, for joining us today and for sharing some of P. Terry's stories with us. And thank you so much for your leadership in the community. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Woods, and I am the 2020 FAVE Awards Committee Chair. Um, and besides that, I am also the donor, the manager of donor relations at United Way for Greater Austin. It has been my pleasure to serve as chair this year, even though things didn't quite turn out like I would have liked or thought, um, but we are so excited to be here with each and every one of you tonight to celebrate Austin businesses and all 40 of our fin fave finalists here. But how do we get here? This past summer, we had an open call for fave award nominations. All nominees were asked to submit answers to a series of questions about their business. These questions were shared up with a panel were shared with a panel of judges made up of Austin Young Chamber members who had the extremely tough decision of narrowing those nominations down to the 40 finalists you will see tonight. As we're settling in for a great evening with our Antonelli's cheese trays, Tiff's treats, and assortment of beverages, um, we'd love for you to get social with us. 
Our friends at Brown Distributing have put together an amazing cooler full of Bud Light products for one attendee to win. Just post a selfie on Instagram with one of the gift bag brews, include the hashtag my fave gala drink and tag AYC and Brown Distributing. You can do a normal post or a story and we'll do a random drawing after the event and select a winner. Now, it is my pleasure to kick off the awards presentation with our first two awards presented by Tito's Handmade Vodka. First up is our Fave Community Minded Company. Fave Community Minded Company is a business who has supported the greater Austin community by giving back through time, talent, or treasure over the last 12 months. Congratulations to our finalists, Hawkins Buckley Jewelry Designs, NI, Silicone Labs, and Upswing. And the winner is, drum roll please, NI. This year has been a banner year for NI's strategic philanthropy pillar as they donated $1 million towards All Together ATX Fund, in addition to increased technology support to community members through local nonprofits. All right, thank you so much. First off, wanted to say a big thank you to the Austin Young Chamber for hosting this event. And I am so honored to be here and a part of this great company with so many other amazing finalists. A big shout out to our awesome Aniers who are also here in attendance tonight. This year has been full of so many unexpected events and extreme challenges for all. I feel honored to be a part of a company that has prioritized giving back to Central Texas and our neighbors who need it most. We are so appreciative of this recognition and are so proud to be a part of a community who are able to work together across all sectors to make a positive impact. Thank you so much. All right, congratulations again, NI. Our next category is Fave Company Culture. Fave Company Culture is a company with a demonstrated commitment to employee development, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and creating a rewarding and safe work atmosphere for both in-office and remote employees. Congratulations to this year's finalists. Accruent, Civilitude, Koros, and Prep to Your Door. And the Fave Company Culture winner is Civilitude. Civilitude is a very strategic and intentional is very strategic and intentional about attracting applicants who align with their values and culture. This fast-paced firm is passionate about community work, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and personal and professional growth for each employee. Congratulations again, Civilitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Nat. I'm the vice president at Civilitude. Honor and humble to be uh, winning this category, even though the, um, you know it would have been cool if it's a best dressed engineer or something like that. You know, ideal for next year. Uh, but I am humble representing Civilitude for the Culture Award because for me, it, it, it's much bigger. It's not about any individual. For us, we care about people, processes, product, and and all of the, the things that come into making this company kind of boutique but great. Uh, so again, shout out to a lot of our team members who work hard every day. Our culture is growth. And so we know that just because you struggle doesn't mean that you're growing. Uh, the goal should never been to struggle. And, and you know, we all handle it well as best of our can. But if you don't struggle, I feel like we may not have a chance of growing. So that's what we aim and that's what we strive toward. Again, shout out to the team who's uh, making a lot of noise downstairs. So go civility. Congratulations again to NI and Civility. I am now going to pass the virtual mic to Tony D. Domenico to present our next two awards. Hello, my name is Tony D. Domenico, and I am the Chief Operating Officer at Ascension Seton Northwest. I'm excited to be here today to support the Austin Young Chamber's efforts to promote our local business community and strengthen our young professional workforce. At Ascension Seton, young professionals contribute to our growth through excellent and compassionate patient care, clinical and financial operations, sustainable business insights, innovation and technology, and community service. We are proud to witness young professionals cultivate prosperity 
for our business community in Central Texas. Today, I am thrilled to present the next two awards. First up is the FAB Arts and Culture Experience. This is a place or event that encourages, engages, and inspires the Austin community with arts and culture experiences. Congratulations to the finalists. Austin Creative Reuse, Austin Film Festival, Ballet Austin, Zach Theater. And the winner is Zach Theater. As an arts organization that has served the Austin community for nearly 100 years, Zach is no stranger to adapting. Zach is a theater of national impact that cultivates empathy, ignites joy, and transforms lives. They could simply be viewed as an entertainment venue, but Zach strives to be the hub of conversation and a tool for the Austin community. Zach is currently planning social distance experiences, continues educational efforts to inspire Central Texas youth, and are finding any opportunity to uplift artists and the creative community during this pandemic. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much to the Austin Young Chamber uh, Dave Awards Planning Committee and all of the AYC members who thought Zach when asked what their favorite Austin arts and culture experience was. I'm sure everyone here knows that it's been a, a rough year for the arts and culture organizations around the world, and Zach Theater was not spared from this experience. Uh, no one was, in fact. Uh, so I absolutely must give a shout out to our co-nominees for their extraordinary work in the field here in Austin, to Austin Creative Reuse, Austin Film Festival, and Ballet Austin. They are amazing cultural institutions that each deserve all of the love and attention we have. In times of trouble or crisis, people tend to turn to arts and culture when in need of escape from it all. Uh, and it turns out that a global pandemic is no exception to this trend. Uh, I know most of y'all here turned to Netflix binges or digital live performances. Uh, some took up pottery or did puzzles of famous uh, works of art uh, just to cope. Um, some of y'all even caved and started recreating dance trends on TikTok. It's true. I know it. You know it. Let's just admit it. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is that this year was a year when Zach and other arts organizations couldn't be there in person for our patrons. So we all did what artists do best. We improvised. We offered virtual arts classes. We live streamed closed performances. We started arts-based podcasts. You name it, we did it, all in the name of keeping art healthy and safe. We were there for you before the pandemic and we found ways to be there for you during the pandemic. And Zach and the arts at all will be there for you again when this eventually subsides. So thank you all so much for this. It means the world to us, especially now. Thank you, Greg. The next category is the Fave Innovative Company. The Fave Innovative Company is a business with a proven track record of leveraging talent, creative problem solving, and collaboration to move their industry or business forward. Congratulations to this year's finalists. Disco, Giant Squid Group, Re3D, Vendor. And the winner is Re3D. A small business with global presence, RE3D lives and breathes its mission to democratize access to manufacturing. Their focus on providing a tool for anyone, anywhere, anytime to be the problem solvers for their community has connected them with like-minded change makers around the world. From their outposts in Puerto Rico to their customers and partners in Turkey, Kenya, Nigeria, and beyond, RE3D and its network have exemplified manufacturing as a service and helping our communities innovate. Thank you so much for um, this honor. I <clears throat> didn't expect to get choked up. Um, you know, it's been it's been said that it takes a a village to raise a child, and I I think it's fair to say it takes a, a community and a city um, as large as Austin to um, breed a company that's you know open source and bootstrapped and crap. Not crappy, sorry, scrappy, and um, trying to manufacture um, here with dirty fingernails in, in, in Texas. And, um, you know, our story is so much one of Austin and you and you all and your communities. Uh, we proudly launched with just an idea in our head and a, a small prototype at South by Southwest in 2013. And we're so honored 
um, as are um, uh, other Austin companies to be um, crowdfunded in a day on, on Kickstarter that instantly put us in 23 countries. Um, it was this community that the host us for free in, in Capital Factory, thanks to Josh Bear, um, for a year. And then we squatted in a house in Rainey with, with other um, scrappy startups and, and went on now to find our home in the heart of the Dub Academy and next to Brew and Brew in Austin, Texas. And it was um, Brew and Brew and the Draft House and other breweries that came forward and, and offer, often offer their locations when we supported uh, manufacturing PPE um, with other makers during the COVID crisis. It's been a uh, mass challenge Austin that's advocated for us and, and the WeWork um, Austin finals that um, we couldn't have made it through without the support of groups like uh, Bunker Labs that supports uh, veterans and those actively serving like myself that are trying to figure out how to lead a company. And so um, it's, it's those networks that just grow us so much and, and the connections with um, Austin Technology Incubator and, and their networks that have now allowed us to partner with strategics like, um, like Dell, um, as well as um, the reverse pitch with the city of Austin, which our, our chief of staff, Mike Strong, won and has catalyzed our relationship with the uh, um, Restore and um, Austin Humani uh, Habitat for Humanity. So thank you so much. It's, it's you, it's your communities that keep us alive and help us figure out how we can dream big and print huge. And we couldn't be more honored to accept this as, as we think about um, creating and building a better society one layer at a time um, post COVID and with a goal to be inclusive and, and to grow together. So we look forward to getting to know the Austin Chamber more, the Young Chamber more, and um, just couldn't be more humbled. So thank you all. Thank you all to all the finalists and the organizers. Um, this is truly an honor. All right, thank you. Congratulations again to Zach Theater and Re3D. Let's check out another finalist video. Good evening, good evening. My name is Corey McDermott and I am the managing partner at Leaders Inspire Leaders. And we help executives drive repeatable growth through their most significant asset, their people. So as a board member here at the Austin Young Chamber, uh, the Fave Awards is a shining star signature event every single year and I'm so excited to be a part of it this year and support Austin businesses and of course, the Austin Young Chamber. I am honored to present our next two FAVE awards presented by Lyft. First, FAVE Local Source for Info. FAVE Local Source for Info is an Austin area news outlet, influencer, or other media channel with a reputation for delivering high quality, impactful content. Congratulations to our finalists, Austin PBS, Kelly, KLRU-TV, tongue-tied, clearly, Austin.com Network, Community Impact Newspaper, and Visit Austin. And the winner is Austin PBS, KLRU-TV. Austin PBS creates engaging content that showcases the people that make Austin unique. Each year, Austin PBS hosts more than 100 events that give our community a safe space to reflect, discuss, and take part in conversations about important topics impacting our lives. Thank you, Coy. Appreciate it very much. And what a great group of finalists and we're delighted to be included among among a bunch like that. Thank you. Um, and on behalf of everyone at Austin PBS, thank you to everyone at Chamber. We're especially grateful for this recognition because many people say PBS isn't as relevant to younger audiences uh, as it might be. And uh, we don't believe that's true. From Austin City Limits, our signature program to American Experience, from Daniel Tiger to Downton Abbey or, or the Day Tripper or from Nature to Nova, we really believe that PBS is more relevant than ever before for people who want quality, authenticity, honesty, and inspiration. Uh, so being honored like this by the Austin Young Chamber means so much to us. We're proud that the Chamber's chosen us tonight, and we'll try to work very hard uh, in the future to continue to deserve this recognition. And congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Bill. Next up is Fave Small Business. Fave Small Business is a local or independently operated enterprise with fewer than 50 employees. Congratulations to this year's finalists. Ability, Antonelli's Cheese Shop, Blue Sky Partners, and Bowie & Co. And the winner is Antonelli's Cheese Shop. As essential workers operating a small grocery, Antonelli's Cheese continued to support small farmers and our community in 2020 by safely continuing operations early in the pandemic, prioritizing team health and safety, and gaining national exposure. Woo! 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 That's awesome. Um, okay, I just finished scarfing spaghetti. So hopefully there's not spaghetti in our face, but thank you all. Thank you so much. This is um, perfect. It's like what we oh, all need thank you. fuel to keep us going. Um, I think tonight, Elia wants to say something. What would you like to say? Okay. Hurry thank up. you to the Austin Young Chamber um, and congratulations to all the other finalists. I um, didn't think she's gonna, I didn't think we are gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> and so really what's our baby what's most important to us tonight as a small business we do not get to take our team to all these award shows and things like that so if there's ever something positive to come out of the pandemic it's tonight that we have six of our teammates here and so this is your award y'all are amazing we don't have a business you. without you you define our small business so alex gina eleanor casey and anna thank you so much for for being our small business Thank you for helping to live our do good, eat good mission. And literally to every one of you who has called or purchased something or shared something, um, you are keeping us going during this time. Lifeline, lifeline during the pandemic. Thank you. Thank y'all. Got to love it. So uh, congratulations again to Austin PBS and Antonelli's Cheese. And now I will pass the virtual mic to Leslie Boteo to continue the awards presentation. Hola a todos. Hi, my name is Leslie Botello and I am the operations manager at Civilitude. Uh, Civilitude is involved with the Austin Young Chamber because we share the same vision for Austin to have the most inclusive, collaborative and community focused workforce in the country. Uh, we strive for our workforce at Civilitude to be as inclusive, collaborative and community focused. And I think this is actually one of the reasons why we received the Fave Company Culture Award this evening. Um, and well, Civilitude is super excited to present the next two Fave Awards. First, Fave Way to Keep Austin Healthy. Fave Way to Keep Austin Healthy is a company or brand that contributes to Austin's mental, physical, or financial health. Congratulations to the finalists. Ascension Seton, Melody Dance Fit, Terrytown Pharmacy, and University Federal Credit Union. And the winner is Ascension Seton. Ascension Seton is committed to the health and well-being of their associates in our community. With the onset of COVID-19, Ascension Seton continued to support the wellness of the most vulnerable in Austin through donations, deploying virtual care, and committing to rapid and broad-scale growth to meet consumer needs and keep patients safe. Well, thank you so much, uh, Leslie. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much, Austin uh, Young Chambers, uh, for the opportunity to really um, highlight the, the great work of our associates. You know, we're a ministry and mission that's been part of Austin for over 120 years. And quite frankly, we are built on and, and uh, fulfill that mission based off of uh, the work and hands and hearts of over 12,000 associates that uh, serve this ministry day in and day out. Now, of course, it's been challenging times for all of us as a community, and, and it's, there's been uh, no a clear message for us all that it's we have to, uh, to be in this together. And since February, We've been working with our community partners um, and as well as our associates to fulfill our mission in our service to our community in so many different ways. And the best of all, all of our team and individuals has come out during this most difficult time in many different ways, whether it's through innovation, care and compassion and walking alongside our community in times of, the, of, of utmost uncertainty in many different ways that are there. And so it's uh, really special to be uh, recognized as an organization uh, in, in the way that we are tonight and want to really thank you and thank you for your partnership and the opportunity to serve this community in the way that we have. So have a good evening. Thank you.
Congratulations to Ascension Seton. Our next category is Fave YP Led Business. The Fave YP Led Business is a local company with a young professional currently in the top management role. Nominees for these awards must be 40 or under as of December 31st, 2020. Congratulations to this year's finalists, Bumble, Ojo Labs, Recalibrate, and The Mentor Method. And the winner is Recalibrate, led by Gloria Chan Packer. Led by owner Gloria Chan Packer, Recalibrate is a workplace mental wellness provider trailblazing the creation and growth of a space for mental health at work, destigmatizing mental wellness and offering everyday tools that help foster impact while realistically fitting into a professional life. Thank you so much, Leslie. Thank you, Austin Young Chamber. Um, this is such an amazing honor. I am, a, it's wild to think back that just a little over two years ago, um, I was opening Recalibrate when workplace mental wellness was barely, if even a thing. And I was leaving a career that I loved in corporate leadership and consulting that I really found so fulfilling. And the primary reason that I left to create Recalibrate was because I went through such an unexpected medical battle that forced me to re-examine my own relationship with stress and forced me to learn a lot more about the body brain science behind stress and so many other everyday mental wellness experiences that so many of us share around pressure to perform, self-doubt, perfectionism, anxiety. And I just felt like for so many busy professionals like so many of y'all, um, we kind of live in this weird subconscious culture where we kind of glamorize stress and then are really afraid and kind of maybe have some stigmas that we're still working through around slowing down and taking care of our minds and our emotions. And I think especially right now, we are seeing just how much of our human selves we bring to the workplace um, and how difficult it can be to kind of separate, separate out those bits. Um, and so it's meant so much to be able to work to educate and empower people to just understand the minds and emotions that make us humans so that we can take care of those parts of us that much better, not only for ourselves and our teammates in our workplaces, but also for our friends, families, and communities. Um, so thank you so much, Austin Young Chamber again. Thank you to my team, Mish, Lisa, and Rachel, who are all here today. Thank you to our clients who have partnered with us and invested in mental wellness for their employees, not only here in Austin, but now across the globe. Uh, thank you to my mentors and friends, and also just all of the mental health professionals who have been doing this for so long, far before Recalibrate even existed. Um, and thank you to my husband sitting next to me who has undyingly loved and supported me. Um, and thank you to all of you for showing up uh, for our community as well. Thank you guys. Well, again, congratulations to Ascension Seton and Recalibrate. Uh, cheers for that. And now let's watch our finalist video. All right, are y'all ready to close the awards out strong? My name's Amber DePippa, and I'm the Manager of Benefits and Wellness at University Federal Credit Union. USU has enjoyed over 10 years of friendship and collaboration with the Austin Young Chamber. We have seen the organization grow year after year and provide essential social, civic, and personal development opportunities, as well as Austin Young professionals. As a business, we are thankful that the Austin Young Chamber hosts events like the Fave Awards in order to recognize businesses helping our young leaders thrive, connect, and serve in our community. I'm thrilled to be here tonight to announce our final two awards presented by University Federal Credit Union. First up is Fave Local Nonprofit. The Fave Local Nonprofit is a nonprofit organization whose mission is making a difference in the greater Austin community. Congrats to our finalists. Austin Habitat for Humanity, Latinitas, Safe, and United Way for Greater Austin. And the winner is Latinitas. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Kiko Butanda, Deputy Executive Director. On behalf of Latinitas staff and board, thank you to the AYC and FAVE Awards Committee for this honor. 
and congratulations to our fellow finalists. Uh, we were founded in Austin almost 20 years ago, and since then, have dedicated ourselves to building the equitable world we want to see by uplifting girls of color to be courageous leaders in digital media and STEM who advocate for themselves and their communities. The pandemic has impacted all of us, all of our lives, and at Latinitas, we knew from the start that we would not slow down or shy away from offering our services. We knew as a community of color-led and focused organization, we had to rely on our years of being agile, of bilingual community engagement, um, our reputation of serving students in an accessible, meaningful way that we needed to double down on our services, on our programs, and transition them to a virtual model to support youth of color and their families, and not just our home base of Central Texas, but now state and nationwide. Um, a shout out to our CEO and founder, Laura Donnelly, and marketing and dev director, T.C. Wah, and the virtual crowd right now. I know we're all proud of our team and our dedication to serving the future generation of girls. As we like to say, the future is Chica. So, muchas gracias. Thank you so much for recognizing that commitment. Thank you. All right, our final category for this year's awards is none other than fave legendary Austin brand. This is an e-commerce service or brick and mortar brand based in the greater Austin area and known regionally, nationally, and or globally. Congratulations to our 2020 finalists, Clean B, P. Terry's Burger Stand, and Zach Theater. And the winner is H-E-B. In the past 12 months, HEB has spent ample time preparing for the COVID-19 pandemic and ensuring that communities and customers have the support needed to get through this time together. Because of their proactive efforts and thoughtful leadership, the HEB brand is the nation leading grocery and retail expert. Hi everyone, um, I'm Felicia with HEB. We are so excited to be a part of this event and so happy to win the most legendary brand award. Um, we want to thank our customers, first of all, for supporting us through COVID and trusting us, and our partners who are the most legendary of all, who were able to stick it out and continue to serve our communities during this time. We worked really hard to gain support and give support to our partners like the Food Bank and Meals on Wheels and provide meals for frontline workers because community is so important to HEB. Um, but we also did some really cool stuff. We introduced everyone to curbside, and I'm sure lots of people have already used curbside during the pandemic, so we're so thankful that we were able to really build that part of our e-commerce business as well. Um, many of you shop at our SoCo, our South Congress store, which is legendary in its own world, and we're so thankful to have everyone's um, continued support even during this pandemic as well, and continue to build those legends from HEB. Um, again, we're an and company, so we took this challenge head on and wanted to be there for our customers in every way. Um, so again, thank you all so much, the Austin Young Chamber. We appreciate your partnership. We appreciate the partnership and support of so many nonprofits and so many community partners that are in this virtual room with us tonight. Um, but again, no sort is more, and we are your legendary HEB. So thank you all so much for this honor. Congratulations again to Latinitas and HEB. Now let's watch the last fave finalist video before Alicia Palacios Woods, President and CEO of the Austin Young Chamber, closes out the evening. Thank you. Good, e good evening, everyone. I'm here to close out the awards. Uh, congratulations to all 40 of our fave finalists and 10 winners this evening. What each of you have achieved over the last 12 months is truly remarkable, and we thank you for your tremendous work during this time. Thank you also to each of our sponsors and gift bag partners for supporting the FAVE Awards, the Austin Young Chamber, and the Central Texas business community. And of course, a huge thanks to our FAVE committee for making all of this happen. Um, and finally, thanks to you, each of you, for attending tonight's FAVE Awards, embracing this new format, and leaning into a new technology, letting us be creative. Just a reminder that the silent auction will be open until 11.59 p.m. online, so there's still time to get your bids in. We will be keeping tonight's virtual platform open until about 8 p.m., so feel free to network until then. Uh, thanks again for joining us for our 2020 Fave Awards. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>